Good morning. We're coming on the air here at 11.35 a.m. July 4th for reports of a shooting that has just happened today at the Highland Park 4th Fest in the northern suburbs. Just tragic to hear on any day, but especially on a day that's supposed to be celebrated like July 4th. Well, you can see how Highland Park came out. The, yeah. the, the nation has come out to show their support with love from New York. Oh, wow, I didn't even notice that one. I mean, this goes to show what a tight-knit community Highland Park is. This goes to show how the country is in mourning with Highland Park. Mm. And this goes to show that the nation feels that this is a completely senseless tragedy and it needs to stop. This shouldn't be happening. This isn't another story about the 21-year-old who's accused of shooting into the crowd of the Highland Park 4th of July parade. On a day that we came together to celebrate community and freedom, we're instead mourning the tragic loss of life and struggling with the terror that was brought upon us. Instead, it's about this man, Deputy Chief Christopher Cavelli. He was the face and voice of the police response to the deadly attack. People were scared. They were terrified. Um, they knew that there was an active shooter in the parade route. Um, in, in it is imperative as law enforcement and as government that we start to push out what we know right now. Do people need to shelter in place? Do they need to take cover? Do they need to flee from the scene if they're able to? Um, communication in any critical incident is of the utmost importance. It's, it's as important as catching the offender. So tell me a little bit about what, if you can, what those conversations with higher ups look like in terms of here's what we know, here's what we should, sh what we sh what we should share. I guess, how do you decide what is valuable to the public and what isn't? Well, really, when I look at information that needs to be shared, I look at if I was watching TV, if I was uh, a resident of Highland Park, what do I want to know right now? What do I need to know? What's extremely important to know now? And what can we wait and message out later uh, that, that can sit on the back burner for a little bit? We come back on the air now with this update on the shooting at the 4th of July parade in Highland Park. Those are the types of conversations we would have based on the information and intelligence that we had right here, right now. And then once the identity of this individual was determined and we were certain of who was responsible for this attack in a normal investigation where public safety uh, isn't at risk, that might be information we hold back on and not release right away. There was no hesitation to push this out because we wanted the community's help in locating this person. And that is exactly what happened. He is believed to be driving a 2010 silver Honda Fit uh, vehicle license plate, Illinois. A member of the community heard the information we pushed out regarding what he was driving. His vehicle was spotted on, on US 41 and somebody called 911. And within seconds, dozens of police officers were able to take him into custody. They found another firearm in his car and uh, as previously stated, uh, what his intentions potentially were with that firearm. And they weren't good. All of that happened on day one and was shared with the community almost immediately. There were police officers that were able to recognize his photo once it was revealed, and that helped tremendously. In the days following the arrest uh, and having worked as a public information officer in some other incidents that rose to the national level, I knew there were going to be a lot of inquiries and a lot of interest on motive, uh, specifics as to what exactly happened, where, when, and how, and the questions would become, go from more broad to very specific. Um, and that's where now a balancing act comes into play because there, at that point, there is no more threat to the community uh, with this particular incident. Yeah. Now we do have somebody that's about to be charged with murder in custody. The investigation at that point now starts to take a higher level than maybe information that we're pushing out. Cavelli's approach when communicating with media and the public was strikingly different than how law enforcement handled it in the aftermath of the elementary school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. And as you know, there was some confusion and also people were upset Absolutely. Uh, with their, with their um, police forces because they didn't really know what was going on. Right. They felt like information was being withheld and no one yes. could really figure out what was going on. Yes, and, and that is very true. And, and I frequently watch the news and watch press conferences and watch other PIOs. 
please understand at this time, we will be making a statement and not taking any questions. I'm somewhat of a critical person myself, <laughs> especially when it involves somebody that's doing the same job that I do. I, I learn from those incidents and I, I'll, I'll ask myself, why wouldn't they release this? Or why did they say this? Or this seems misleading to me. And, and it's frustrating. The community wants to know. And when you don't give true, accurate information that's timely or you're defensive, um, you start breaking that trust that the public has in you. And that goes exactly the opposite of what us as a profession need to happen and what we're trying to do. We're trying to build that public trust and, and build these connections and, and ensure that anything that has been damaged is repaired with the community. And in public information, that is a crucial part of doing that. You have to get out in front of that message right away. You have to provide consistent updates in the form of press conferences. I'm not a big fan of a press conference where uh, individuals leave the podium before answering questions. A press conference is meant to be a two-way street and a two-way flow of communication. The media all knows there's questions that government might not be able to answer right here and right now. That's okay. You don't have to answer. You don't have to have all the answers at this point but you do need to be willing to take questions and answer what you know. When you all were kind of just going through the day, did you realize the impact that this would have? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think that in the back of all of our heads that this was not going to be uh, a local story. We knew that this was huge. This was major. This was an unbelievably traumatic, tragic event. Uh, mass casualties, another mass shooting. I think that was in the back of everybody's head. Do you think that kind of added to the pressure of making sure you got it right, if that makes sense? You know, all public information officers should be trying to get it right no right. matter what the story is. And, and whether it's something that is local, regional, uh, maybe statewide or national. I mean, it, the information should always be accurate because if it's if it's not accurate, if it's if you're not getting it right or you're not messaging properly, that becomes the story.